Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part three of the Sony KB1942R. In the previous video, we had pulled the power supply board and we did a, we, we did a rework on that with uh, nice fresh capacitors and stuff minus the main electrolytic, which is still fine. So we're gonna put this back into the set, hook it up, and then we're going to go ahead and start with the uh, deflection drive and if we have time work on the horizontal output board um, so let's get to that the greatest difficulty in this is the utter lack of space that they give you to mess around with this thing so I'm gonna try to see if I can get this thing in here without too much difficulty so the first thing we have to do with this is hook the AC back up and you can see I got those two points marked in red and they were originally wire wrapped but I'm not going to do wire wrap on this let's see this was facing towards that way nicely labeled black and white so you know which one's the hot and which one's the neutral Let me just prop this up here. I'm going to twist this a little bit. Just so that it's a little bit tighter. Because obviously I don't want this to come undone and touch some other crucial part on the board and dump 120 volts onto it and blow it up. So I'm just going to solder this on here. Same with the other connection. And then we can work on laying the board down. And we'll start from the uh, back here. There are two connections that go to other boards. We'll work on those just a little bit. Trying to fight all of the, uh, move that CRT board out of the way. And there's a little retainer back there we slide it into like that. start hooking stuff up now these are nicely labeled and if they weren't labeled I'd still have a map to tell me where they went there we go this one's number eight Not this one this is number Eleven. Let's plug that guy in. This one behind the electrolytic. This guy. Let's see here. Nope, according to that, that's F7. This is F5. And then F4 is going to go here. <clears throat> now, one of these goes to A8 and the other one goes to D5. D being deflection is going to be this one over here. So I'm not going to fully hook that one back up since we're going to be yanking that board out next. But I will route the wiring 
on Sony's, it is, wire dress is kind of important. I've noticed that if you don't do proper wire dress, you'll get lots of little artifacts and distortions in the picture. That's definitely true with their later digital chassis. So I'm just going to go ahead and route this stuff back to its little wire holders. And that would go right there, but we're not going to hook that up. This one goes around back to the IF board. Okay, and that plugs it on the side of the IF board, <clears throat> which you probably can't see because it's off camera. Let's see, yep, all right. So, power supply board's back in. Uh, now what I could do, and probably what I should do, let's hook this up anyways. And just to make sure that we've done our job here, we're going to power the TV up very briefly and just see if the TV comes alive or if, you know, something blows up. Good idea to check your work after you've done all this work on these boards, section by section. So let me get a cord on it and let's plug it in. So this is to see if I did my work right. And it's either going to fly or it's going to fry. I got a raster, but as you can see, we still have those sweep and de-voltage issues. So we need to take care of that. But... The power supply is alive and working, so let's work on the deflection next. Alright, so quickly discharged my power supply. So now we can focus on uh, getting this out. And just because I'm a little cautious, I am going to work on uh, making a map of all of these connectors here. I know they are labeled, but it's a good idea to make a map. So let me just quickly draw this out. And so we've got a small connector there. And then we've got our yoke back here. Another one next to it, which is a two pinner. And then another colored one in the middle of the board. And these two deflection connectors over here that go to the drive. So there's my uh, primitive map there. And I'm just going to number them as I take them out. <clears throat> Any ones that have numbers, it's obviously going to be beneficial. All right, so that's D2. And what are you? You are D12. And the one back here. You are D1. D3, here D11, and the one next to it that we just connected was D5, that one in the back there is D7,
and I'll probably have to slide this board out some to get to the very ones in the back, the very one left in the back. Yep, we're going to have to pull that one out. So, I'm going to get my longer screwdriver. Didn't want to use a shorter one because I'd probably bang it into the neck board and not the best idea. Let's go ahead and pull this one forward. And there's another off-board connector that I need to hunt down. It's attached to a fat ribbon cable. This yoke does not want to come free. Let's disconnect this back here. You are... What are you? You're D9. Okay, so D9. D7 is the yoke which is being extremely stubborn. Let's see if I can rotate this out. And then we've got this ribbon back here which connects to something. What does that connect to? That goes to our IF board actually. All right, let's disconnect that. And then we have to make a mess here unrouting all these cables. This is really the fun that you have to put up with in order to service and restore one of these things is taking it apart and the off card one is going to be B1. Now that I got this away enough, let's see if I can get this yoke connector off. It certainly does not want to cooperate with me and this board flexes too much, I don't want it to break. Alright, so. That's really stuck on there. I'm going to get a little flat blade screwdriver and just very carefully pry it up on each side. Because this one's like really stuck. And I don't want to bust the connector if I don't have to. Not sure what this is. This is a wedge of some kind. Interesting. Didn't see where that came from. Alright, so that did come up finally. And now we start to see, I don't know if you can see that there, that this was stored outside. Uh, because there's a lot of dirt and debris and spotting, indicative of it being uh, out in an, a less than habitable environment. Alright, so that's out. Let's go ahead and get the television side of this free and then we can work on the board. Alright, so here's our deflection board and they divvy this up into a, a fair amount of sections here. You can tell you've got your vertical section here, this is your pincushion and convergence, uh, this is your horizontal oscillator here, they call this etc. I'm not sure what that is, have to look at the up there, this is your vertical output stage here, horizontal AFC. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff going on this board. There's been a little factory modification here and here. So this one will get the same treatment. We'll do the recap on this board, and then we'll uh, clean the pots, noting their positions, and definitely redo the soldering. Let's see if we can just get a, a brush or something just to clean this board up because it's kind of gross. So just a soft natural bristle brush. I don't use nylon. Nylon can create static charges which probably doesn't matter too much here on this board but if you have sensitive stuff like ICs the natural bristle is the better way to dust it off. I suppose you could use compressed air if you want to but I'm always worried about blowing some component over or busting a choke or something like that. Things that are not easily obtainable 
and you've got this one Sony Drive IC here. But I'm thinking this was definitely outside for a while. I just moved my vertical hold, which means it's probably going to jump when we put this back together. Alright, so the next thing to do, let's zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it a little better, is we're going to make our little map of capacitors, just because it's a good idea. Alright, like I said, making maps, taking pictures, this is the kind of stuff that saves you a lot of time. So I'm just going to draw this out, real simple, and then just as we see the caps, note their location. You can even add a little reference here, just as kind of a, to show you where it's at. So we've got this guy. Next to it we've got a little dude here, this guy here, and then this guy here, and his negatives out this way. This one's out this way. Come over here to the top corner. We've got another guy. And for all you guys just starting out doing this kind of work, I beseech you, make notes. I will save you so much time and energy. Because if you trust what's on the board, if you trust the silk screening, you will often find that the silk screening is incorrect and you'll install our part backwards and things will go kablooey and then you'll be cleaning up another mess I still have to write down all these values but right now I'm just noting their locations Okay, so there's our map. Oh, I almost missed this guy hiding down here. Yeah, let's see, there was another one hiding over here next to that linearity control. And then there's one just beneath the connector over here. I'm sure if I miss any, they'll turn up. Alright, so let's see. You're a 1 at 50. You're a 2.2. That's one of the high voltage caps. Another 1 at 50. 47 at 50. Feel free to speed this up and go as quick as you went through this, skip ahead, whatever. This is a 330 at 50. That's a 10 at 50. This is a 220 at 35. This is a 33 at 50. See what this one over here is. It's another one at 50. This guy over here, 2.2 at 50. Hundred at 35. Another one at 50. Let's see, that's a 10 at 50. That's another 220 at 35. 
250 and this one up here is uh, 470 35 and then the last one up here is a 4.750 okay so we got everything logged in there so now it's time to start yanking the parts and uh, marking the board all right so to make the soldering easy I'll usually find the caps on here and I'll mark them in red as you saw on the last one that I did the power supply board that way I can just grab the desolder braid and go at it. I know this is like totally boring. Like I said, feel free to skip ahead, whatever you'd like. I get people that tell me they want to see it in due time, in real time, see the process of it. And then I get the people that are like, this is boring, do something else. Well, this is a part of it. You have to do the boring part before you yield the results of repair. In this case, restoration, because that's what I intend to do is restore this and keep it. This is kind of one of my uh, keeper sets because I wanted a nice Trinitron. I've always had like beater ones where the CRTs are dead and they don't rejuvenate by the way so if you get one with a dead CRT just move on I've never had a Trinitron successfully rejuvenate ever if you're really lucky it'll go arky sparky when you turn it on and uh, hurt something after you try to rejuvenate it I guess it's just how the guns are designed Okay, I think that's it. I think we're good to go there. Let's just move some of these over, make them stand out a little bit better. And we'll start yanking them out. so I can read it as I go. Make sure that I'm yanking the right ones. Make sure that there's no discrepancies because again, you don't want to don't want to mess this up. All right. So we'll start here at this edge of the board. Just start taking them out. should be our 470 and it is when I started doing this 20 something years ago you didn't have these massive need for recapping these sets weren't old enough yet but now a lot of these ones from the 70s you see these large groups of capacitors that have to get changed out they're leaky, they've opened. And granted, for the most part, the set will still function with messed up capacitors. Just won't function well. My biggest concern with this is the lack of width. And if it has to do with IC501 here, which is your horizontal drive, that's gonna be a tricky one to find. There are width adjustments and stuff 
But as we saw in the very first video of the series, the width was pulsating and it was moving around and you could kind of like whack on the set and the, the width would come up. So I'm hoping that it is just loose connections because I have run into ICs where they get a failure of the die and you can tap on them and whack on them and they will screw up. So that's one of those awkward things. That one was starting to leak. It's got uh, electrolyte goo on the bottom. All right. So exciting. Where we're at has become a thoroughfare for people that like to go really fast. They used to have a little Mesa police officer out there on that corner looking for speeders, but they gave up on that for some reason. But it used to be a really good revenue generator. Okay. And did I get you already? No, I did not. Soldered, you didn't yank it yet. There we go. That one was stubborn. Okay, we're getting there. Do this guy here. Got to remember to keep my wick trim so that. The solder on the wick doesn't flow down into the fresh wick, and that's a waste. Where's the other one? That one? Yeah. That one was starting to leak too. You can see the junk there, the electrolyte pissing out the bottom. Okay, we got that guy there. He's just going to fall out. That's a 10. Yeah, you're a 10. That one I hadn't written down yet, so let's do that. Everyone can look at my sleeve for a little bit. All right. This one up here, I didn't mark either. What's it? What are you? You're another one at 50. All right, the mailman sounds like he's here. Let's go get the mail. All righty, got some parts and basically a lot of bills where people want money, so kind of the normal mail stuff. All right, so you're next. Now see, there were two capacitors on that chart that if I did not check as I pulled them out, I would have missed their values. And then we'd have to go to the service literature and look them up, and that takes more time. And if I didn't have service literature, it would take even more time. Because I'd have to go digging for it, hope I can find it, and if not, then I'd have to buy it. Because oftentimes guessing these things is not a good idea. 
there were some manufacturers that would actually print the value of the component on the board. I'm trying to remember who that was other than Heathkit and Dynaco. I know Heath and Dyna both did that, but I don't think there were any commercial manufacturers off the top of my head that did that sort of thing. Maybe there were. Maybe you, a lot of these older generation service industry guys can remember if there are any companies that did that. I always thought that was nice. We're getting there. See, I do it this way because for me, this is faster. If I just desolder a whole bunch of stuff after making a map and yank it out rather than doing it one by one and then having something interrupt me and go, crap, what was that value again? This just works better for me. I'm not terribly good at multitasking. I'm more of a linear thinker, so if I get interrupted in the middle of a process, it oftentimes can be very difficult for me to pick up where I left off. This may be the last one. People are needy today. All right, yep, 220 and 33. There's a little tantalum there too I missed. You should be a one, yep. you at 2.2. Yep, that's the 33. That's the 33 next to that. And so this over here should be the one. Yep. And then this one down here is the 2.2. Which I don't think I released yet. Nope. I didn't have him marked. Okie dokie. So every time you hear that silly notification sound, it's somebody sending me a message or email or something through my YouTube channel or something. Do, 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 do. Yep, that's the 2.2. And you got this one over here. It should be... Another 10 at 50. Yep, that's our 10 microfarad there. So, so far all this checks out. Alright. Uh, got this guy here. Ooh. Rusty. Hard to tell if that's glue or something else. 330 and 50, that checks out. Got this guy here, which should be another one at 50. Yep. 2.2 .2 at 250. Yep, 2.2 .2 at 250. And you should be another one. Yep. And then this should be a 47, and it is, that one's got P on the bottom, and then finally the 150 here. Alright, so that all checks out. So now what I can do is uh, go get our grip of capacitors and start repopulating the board and I think what I'll do before I do that is just kind of a gentle tabulation of parts so I can just yank them out in one group alright so memorable values 1 at 50, 10 out of 50 
Oh, we had a 2.2 in here too. And then we had a, what, 33. It was a 4.7. Don't remember any 47s though. And then we kind of jump up. Oh no, we did have a 47 at 50. And I'm not sure why the color temperature in the camera has gone nuts. Probably has to do with something of the lighting. And we got a hundred at thirty-five. We got a two twenty at thirty-five. Three thirty at fifty. And then our high voltage stuff was a two point two. 250 and 4.7 at 250. And let's count how many. Looks like we got two there. Two there. Got five there. Three of the tens, one of the thirty threes, one of the forty sevens, one of the one hundreds. Looks like we got two of those, one of those, and one of those. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get a box of parts. Okay, so we have our fat parts box of stuff here. And we're just going to start repopulating the board. I did not have a 4.7 at 250, but I did have another 2.2 and a 3.3, so we're just going to make it 5.5 at uh, 450 or 250. Yeah, I think those were actually 450 volt. All right, so there's our 330 at 50. Here's our 47 at 50. And I'm bending the leads over at the bottom with my hand. Let's see, here's that big 2.2 high voltage cap, which certainly isn't as big as the old one. Amazing how we've shrunk in technology. Let's see, Euro 100 at 35. Let's see, you go down here at the bottom. And let's see here. Let's save that one for last. If we can deal with that. Here's a 220 at 35, which is going to go up here. See if I can move the light a little bit. The lighting sucks. And of course, it's not going to let me do that either. Yeah. Come on from the backside, maybe? Yeah. Anyways, one thing I detest about this rig is that this camera does a terrible job of picking up low level light. I don't know why. One I used to use was so much better. Another 220 that goes there. And let's see. I'm just kind of plucking them out as I go. Stop moving. Alright, here's a 10. Put a 10 there, next to the 220. And then this one down here, that's another one. You're a 33, so you're going to go there. You know, I might replace that tantalum too, just because tantalum. You do have a tendency to fail on these sets. Just bend that over a little bit. Bottom of the board's getting a little crowded. 
you are another one at 50. So you can go over here. You're at 2.2. So you can go here. Well, it's about an hour before the store opens, so I'm going to guess that the phone calls are going to start flooding in here pretty soon. People seem to think that just because I'm here working doesn't uh, means that I can also wait on their every need. And they get really upset when you don't pick up the phone. Let's see here. You're another one. So you can go over here. You're a 4.7, so you can go over here. And you're a 10. Where's another 10? I've already got that one. Do we have another 10 kicking around here? Yeah, right in the middle of the board. I thought so. Here's another one at 50. You can go there. Running out of space on the camera. May have to make a, a splice into this episode after I upload this to the computer. Got two tens at 50, but I have Mark three. Got one there. Another here. Where's the third one? No, the third one's hiding over here by this linearity control. And let's see. You're another 4.7. So you should go down here. And let's see. Here another one. You can go over here. You're another one. Let's see, where have we not been yet? Here's the other one, microfarad. And then the last of the small value stuff. This is a 10. I think I pulled one too many tens. Because I only have three here, but I think I put four in. I picked up four. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, I missed my 470. I gotta go yank that. Let's just double check here. Yeah, it's a 470 at 35 that goes into that spot that I didn't yank yet. Let me go get that. Alrighty. Okay, I'm going to brighten this up a little bit. Can't see the map anymore. Yay! Alright, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Let's go down here to the dark spot. And now we got to deal with our... Uh, once a 4.7. Now, because of limited space and the fact that there is space underneath this board... I'm going to put a 3.3 up top, and then we'll parallel in a 2.2 on the bottom after these are all soldered. So, I'm going to put a red dot next to this one so that I know to solder that in. And so now it's time to solder all the stuff, solder all the capacitors in. And uh, deal with the loose connections on the board. Okie dokie.
more excruciatingly boring work for y'all to view. But you have to do it. Everybody always says recap, 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 like it's, you know, can be done very quickly, but it's not. And if you have to pay somebody like a shop to do it, like, we're $125 an hour. So that usually discourages people from bringing stuff to us to recap. But then oftentimes the novice that doesn't know how to do this kind of work properly will not use the right iron or they'll install it part backwards or not have any sort of proper troubleshooting technique and they'll just say, well, I replaced all the capacitors and didn't fix the original problem and now it's worse. I hate it when that happens. So, yeah, recapping is expensive. If you plan to recap a lot of your old sets, I suggest you get very good with a soldering iron and proficient in electronics before you start tackling projects like that. Just saying. But I have prob probably blown up more equipment in my lifetime than anyone else that you've met. Yeah, that's going to get bumped there. And it was usually because of something stupid, like I slipped with my probe, or forgot to discharge something, and cooked an IC. These things happen. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, people make mistakes. But I've learned well enough to check and double check and triple check and... Even then I still screw up every once in a while. People are people. Okay, we're almost done soldering in all these caps. Oh, I missed one. Maybe that was where the other 10 microfarad went. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. Right next to that connector. C553. Do I even have this in the right way? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's probably the remaining 10 microfarad. But it's not on the map. Huh. So, I am going to have to look up and see what that is. See? People make mistakes. All right. So I'm just going to start cutting all these off, and I'm going to do it just away from the bench to keep all the debris and stuff off the bench for now. So we'll be right back after I'm done snipping all these. Okay, so I got that stuff soldered in. I'm going to solder in uh, in parallel. The 2.2, I need to make the uh, 5 microfarad here. So, let me just double check and make sure I got the right polarity. Negatives going that way. Tin our leads. And I got a nice little spot. Underneath here, I can stick it. That'll give us the uh, correct capacitance. So, I screwed up, and I neglected to record one value of capacitor. little bit more, make it hug the board a little bit more, that's good enough. Um, let's see, where was it? Oh yeah, this guy over here, you can see him right there, That I marked it and yanked it without uh, making a note, and that sat right above that 220 there, I didn't, did not mark it down on the map. You can see here, I put it there and there should have been one directly adjacent so stupid me so now what I have to do is 
grab these SAMs here. And we're going to take a quick look at this board. And that is number C533. So let's go ahead to our parts list here. Electrolytic capacitors. Five thirty. Nope, that can't be it. Wouldn't have been a film. It was an electrolytic. Yeah, let's see. Of course, this could be different because what board are we on? These are all five hundreds. Let's make sure we're on the right board. Also, this is a seventeen or a nineteen forty one instead of a nineteen forty two, so there may be slightly different nomenclature, but I would assume that these boards are all the same. The Sony like to use these same boards for things, so let's look up pictures of the board. And let's see what they label this. So, let's put this side by side here. See, this is a slightly different board. Not the same. It's close. But this is a different board. So, fun, fun. Uh, so now, what we have to do, since we don't have that, is a process of elimination. And we just gotta check off what we have and what we don't have. And so, let's see, the 330 at 50 we had, that goes in the box. The 2.2 we had, and that's here, and that's here, that goes in the box. 220 at 35, that goes in the box. And let's see, there's another 220, yep, 35. Yeah, that one was over here. And then the 47 and 50, that was up here. We got that. And the 4.7 at 250, we got that with the two values there. That goes in the box. Let's see, the 470 at 35, we got there, which was not there anyways, but that goes in the box. And let's see, the 100 at 35, that was here. That goes in the box. And let's see, the 33, 50, we got there and there, so that goes in the box. 1 at 50, we got there and there, so that goes in the box. And let's see here, 1 at 50, we got there. And that goes in the box. 4.750, we got there. We got there, that goes in the box. Another 4.750, which is up here. Those are accounted for, that goes in the box. 1 at 50, got that one there. That goes in the box. 10, 50, yep, we got that one there, and that goes in the box, another 10 at 50, we got that one down there, that goes in the box, 2.2, .2. at 50, that one there, Yep, got that one. That one goes in the box. One at 50. Got this one over here. Yep. Okay. So that's four out of five for the ones. That goes in the box. Here's another 2.2 over here. And I've installed that one. So those are accounted for. And let's see here. One at 50. Which one have I not marked yet? There's one over here. 
that is installed and so that accounts for the five one at fifties uh, let's see and let's see here another ten let's see what ten have I not marked yet all right there's one over here that is in so that accounts for that and we got one left over that's not part of the count and the one that left over is a uh, one microfarad if it'll focus for me no not gonna focus there it is so it's a one microfarad that was the remaining capacitor that was not written down so I'm going to go ahead and put that one there and that's a one at 50 so I'm gonna go get another one at 50 and slap it in there All right. so let's go ahead and put this one at 50 in here and we'll solder this one up and then we'll start working the board we'll just go section by section Alrighty, let's see, I'm going to start from this edge here, and just work my way back. Now this is helpful that these sections are all divvied up. It does help keep track of things. So what I, sh I think I'm going to do after I'm done with these little bits here is just keep focusing on this one section. No phone calls yet, I'm surprised. solder these big connectors in here. I think I'm also going to end up cleaning the connectors with a contact cleaner or something because the fact that they were sitting outdoors likely means that there's oxidation that occurred on either the pins or the socket and that could be a detriment to connectivity for that circuit. Hope nobody had anything important to do today because this is going to take up a lot of your time. And I somehow have to finish this board in the next 15 minutes. And yeah, that was a test point there for 15 volts. I gotta get ready to actually open the store. And just if you're curious, I don't nearly see the TV volume that I used to. Everything's throwaway now. I don't even work on flat panels. Flat panels are a waste of time. Throw it in the trash, get another one. Of course, I'm sure many people will argue that these old TV sets are not worth the time, but I just happen to like them. I just happen to like tinkering with this stuff and keeping things like this alive. But this, uh, the television side of this repair shop is really more of a hobby than it is a, a legit thing. That and we're not licensed to work on TVs. 
I mean, I suppose you don't really need licensing specifically for TVs in the state here. You just need to be an electronic service repair license. But TVs are a hassle. They're big, clunky. Audio is what pays my bills, so that's what I keep doing. That's what I like doing. The TV thing is more of a tinkering thing. Back, I would say, in the mid-90s, there was a lot more TV work. And people were actually willing to pay some money to have their old TV set fixed because a CRT television in the 90s was usually more to replace than it was to fix. But with the advent of everything coming from overseas, that kind of changed. It was no longer true that it was cheaper to fix your set than to replace it, so you go to Walmart and buy a cheap TV, and when it dies in a couple of years, you throw it away and get another one. It's kind of like that with a lot of this uh, consumer-grade audio gear, too. I don't work on new audio gear because it's a waste of time. Most of the manufacturers don't provide what you need to fix them. And if they do, you're stuck with proprietary boards and parts that are f somewhat expensive. So it's just throw it away. But the older gear, people seem to hold on to. It sounds better. It's a better design for the most part. That's really why I'm here, so I'd much rather work on audio gear than televisions. Televisions are fun every once in a while, but I certainly wouldn't want to do it as a 9 to 5. Audio is much more interesting. A lot more bizarre failures. The field is forever changing and these machines get older. Whereas as the televisions get older, they just all start hitting the trash because there's no replacement parts. There's nobody rebuilding CRTs yet. The ETF is working on that, but it might be a while before we ever see rebuilding CRTs as a regular thing. There's certainly a craft to it, and I have no idea what I would be doing in rebuilding a CRT. Scotty Abbott was the last guy that knew how to rebuild CRTs here in the States at uh, Hawkeye Picture Tube, which has been long gone. And I guess the uh, ETF... Uh, early Television Foundation Museum bought a lot of his equipment and they want to start a rebuilding project but uh, I haven't really paid attention to where that's gone in the last couple of years so my information is probably useless not even halfway through this board yet I'm pretty sure I'm going to run out of memory on the camera. So we're going to have to uh, postpone powering this thing up until I can offload this video and film a new one. Empty the camera out. That one's touchy for sure. Just working my way back. That one was loose. Horizontal AFC, another test point. I remember when I started getting into this hobby, discovering the bad horizontal AFC diodes. Figuring out what to replace them with that actually worked, which varies from set to set.
Although, uh, time has told me that the little Schottky diodes that are in like the TO220 packages that are fairly fast recovery, those work pretty well. that test point I ran over already. I think when I get to the halfway point of the board, maybe even before that, I'll have to rotate it. Because my vantage and my uh, angle of approach on my soldering iron is getting to a point where I'm worried about making a bridge or something. This is where I wish I had a, a wave solder tank and just redo it all really quick. Because being over top of this thing is not doing well on my back. And it, ha it doesn't have to do so much with bending over, it just has to do with the fact that I have sciatic nerve damage. And being stationary for any length of time is not good, so I have to kind of move myself around every once in a while and remember to get up and ah we're down to a half an hour nobody ever seems to read our hours when they call they just like expect us to call or be here to call them whenever they want all right this is annoying let me get the phone wasn't anybody there anyways This is just taking way longer than I thought it was going to take. Feel free to fast forward, put it on double, triple, quadruple speed. Because even I am boring myself. That's 
just a test point. That looks fairly oxidized. You can definitely tell the difference between the new solder and the old solder. So anywhere I haven't soldered certainly stands out. It's dull and kind of gross looking. That's a test point. Test points aren't all that critical. Yeah, I'm trying to keep a steady pace here because I'm about to run out of space on the camera. I get about an hour and a half out of this total. But this is all just an anticipation of getting this thing up and running right again and who knows we may still have other issues afoot after we've done all these work on the boards but the purpose of this is to get the the electronics shaped up well enough that we can actually do real troubleshooting without a bunch of underlying problems holding us up so we take care of all the obvious first and then troubleshoot what's left it's not an efficient way to do it, and if this were coming in for a repair, I'd probably end up troubleshooting what absolutely had to be done and making it reliable enough to go out the door. Alright, so if I get it cut off here, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure I'm about to run out of space. Alrighty. Any dull spots I missed here? Yep, there's one there. These uh, potentiometers over here. this connector back here okie dokie I think that's it. I think that's the board. I think that there uh, shouldn't be much left to do here. So that's a lot of resoldering. Oh, there's one there. One there I missed. One next to it looks a little shoddy too. Okay, so that is our deflection drive board. Freshly populated with some new caps, resoldered like crazy. Just looking around making sure there's no bridges or anything ugly here that's going to bite us. Alright, lesson learned, the 1941 and 1942 differ slightly. And then we had to deal with the problem of me being an idiot and not properly documenting one cat that we had to track down, but that's all done now. 
So I'm about a minute and so out of uh, film and uh, I'm going to end it here. So thanks for watching this episode. In episode 4 we'll pop this back in the set and see if that helps with any of our deflection issues we have. And then uh, we'll get working on the horizontal output board with the flyback and everything on it. So thanks for watching the video guys. Uh, more to come.